Uh, good morning. Good to see everybody. Looking forward to uh, another good practice today with the kids. Uh, good, uh, really good uh, week of preparation. Was pleased with the way uh, you know the kids uh, approached uh, their football. Um, really pleased with the coaches doing a good job. Um, you know, our goal is to solidify the two deep by Tuesday in house. You know, and we got a lot of battles still being played out, which is great. You know, anytime you have a tough decision because you like him and you like him and you kind of fight over it, that's a good thing. We have a lot of those things going on. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how things kind of shore up these next couple of days. Uh, like I said, pleased with the way our, our coaches have uh, organized practice and uh, good sharp practices with speed. Um, pleased with our managers. Our man we have a great group of managers and you know, they never get any credit. They never get any credit, but they run everything. They run everything. And, uh, you know, our point man, Stevie Fanagros, and he's done a great job. So I wanted to give him a shout out and, and those guys because uh, it's maybe the best group of managers I've been around in a lot of years. Um, I know a couple uh, people were asking me about um, uh, three walk-ons that we put on scholarship, Clay Cleveland, Joe Nassib, and Greg Tobias. Um, you know, why'd you put them on? What, what do they bring to the table? Um, all three of those guys have very limited opportunities to play football. Clay probably has the most opportunities, but they're three, they're three young men that really epitomize uh, what a student athlete should be at Syracuse, especially. Um, excellent students, unselfish, diligent young men, high GPAs. Um, they go to practice every day knowing that they're going to get pummeled and they keep come back keep they keep coming back fighting they're tough i mean they're they're, they're tough hard-nosed kids that go to class and do a great job and uh was really pleased that we had the opportunity to put them on scholarship um great to see the students back on campus running around i had four or five of them walk into the uh, complex last night at about 9 20 and uh, gave them a quick tour and showed them the, the dome experience and they were all excited and um, so kind of juiced up about that. I know you guys want to turn the page and move forward to Villanova, so let's take a second and do that. Um, yeah, Andy Talley, great football coach, over 200 wins. I think he's got a 62% winning percentage. One of the, one of the best uh, football coaches in the NCAA. Um, Known him, you know, known him for years. I know him better than he probably knows me. Um, his teams are fun to watch. We're going to have our hands full. You know, offensively they have uh, the one, uh, the quarterback Johnny Robertson, that's a preseason All-American, and some uh, some of his preseason accolades. Uh, I was reading about um, two good running backs, both 200 plus pounds, uh, that have had multiple 100-yard performances in their careers. Both seniors. Uh, their offense is, is fast-paced, especially when they play BCS schools. You can see it on tape because the camera, the cameramen can't stay up with the play sometimes. And there's a lot of plays where, you know, they're lined up snapping the ball right at the beginning of the camera shot, and it's usually against their BCS opponents. So I, I'm sure they try to really amp that up. Um, they're going to give us unbalanced formations that are um, – Few and far between when you look at the end of a season, we'll probably get 10 or 15 of them. They're going to run a lot of fake and, and true jet sweep families to try to get our eyes off of our keys. So we ha we've been preparing hard for those. Um, we'll, see, we'll see trick plays inside and out all over the place. I'm sure we'll have more creative blitzes against us where they're really aggressive on defense. Defensively, uh, they have a defensive end that does a great job. The uh, Paris kid, he's long. Um, he can turn quickly. Uh, middle linebacker Donnie Cherry, good football player, makes a ton of tackles. Um, and then the one kid I really like is this Cameron McMurray, the safety, number seven. He's a good football player. And they, they, you know, they run some untraditional looks on defense. So we're going to have to be on point, keep things uh, sharp and concise as we move into our game plan. So not to go on and on, but um, uh, good week of work. Uh, excellent FCS opponent, maybe the best FCS opponent to, opponent to come in here in a long time. Uh, by far uh, one of the best coaches that, that's been in the Dome. Uh, 
especially from a, an FCS school. So we'll have a great challenge, good opportunity. Everything we signed up to do is right on our table and uh, looking forward to getting to Friday night. With that, questions? Questions for Coach? Yeah. Since they play at a fast pace and you guys also play at a fast pace, how beneficial is that for your game prep? I'll tell you, like 10 o'clock Friday night, hopefully it helps. You know, Zach, we have um, practiced against it a bunch because uh, our guys on offense do a good job with it. Um, the difference would be uh, the personnel groupings will be a little bit different than what we're used to. Um, and some of those unbalanced formations and some of those um, uncharacteristic looks that you don't get every day uh, will be, uh, you know, something that we have to overcome. They do a lot of... Uh, they do a lot of things that are different than uh, a lot of the teams in the ACC. You know, everybody's familiar with the zone read concept. Well, the, the quarterback's usually reading the, the end man on the line of scrimmage in those situations. They'll run some influence plays where they'll pull, they'll pull somebody and let a defensive tackle come free, and they'll put the read on him, and they have the quarterback that can do it. You know, he can do it. And... Um, so there's some things there's some things there that uh, are uncharacteristic. So that's why part, it's part of the reason why we try to get a jump on them and start our preparation and practice uh, probably two three days earlier than maybe I have in the past, just because those uncharacteristic looks. Uh, but the kids have done a nice job and the coach has done a great job preparing them. I know Ashton's been playing back the last couple of weeks and Bristol's maybe still coming back from an ankle, but. If those guys are healthy, do you see opportunities for them to be on the field together? Yeah, it could happen. You know, it could happen. Um, I also believe in uh, quality fresh players and, uh, you know, the first guy and the second guy. You know, when you get to the fourth quarter, if you have two guys that can play a lot of snaps at the same position, the position doesn't falter or get slower throughout the course of the game. Um, as a defensive coach, you always talk to your kids about in the middle of the fourth quarter, uh, the 4-3-40 wide receiver and the 4-3 DB are now 4-6s. So now you win with technique or you win with uh, strength and numbers. So that's part of the approach that we're taking, um, not just at that position with those two players, but also on the other side of the ball with our tackle rotation especially. So it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. But there are opportunities where they could both be on the field together. You guys aren't awake yet. Sorry. Um, Not enough coffee. I don't know what's going on here. Let's go. Wake up. Let's go. I remember, uh, around Game this, week. I Steven. remember around uh, this time last year, uh, Clay and Joey Nassib were um, given scholarships again, and we learned about that. Yep. Can you kind of walk me through what the process of that is? Are, these, are those just semester scholarships, year-long? Well, you know, it's year, it's, it's year to year you can do that. You can award it. I'll never let money sit around uh, when I can give it to a young man that deserves it. Um, for both Joe and Clay, um, they'll be done at the mid-year, so we get those back. And then with Greg, he'll be done at the end of the year, and he's really uh, done a nice job with his academics. He's taken some classes that I, I couldn't take. <laughs> Maybe Bud, I don't know. <laughs> we good? Other questions? Um, take return unit. Uh, I know the rules have changed a little bit when they move the ball up. It's, it's harder to get a good return. But do you think Bristol might uh, be in the mix a little bit more in that? Unit? Yeah, we have some good options. I'm excited to show you guys those Friday night. <laughs> some good options. And he's one of them. Yeah. How are Bristol, Nick, and Eric coming along? They're, they're coming, uh, coming along really well. Bristol practiced really well yesterday. Um, uh, Eric's practiced well for the last uh, two days. He's gotten all the reps that he needed. Um, I, th I think they're all. I think all all those kids are ready to roll. Um, Nick Nick will be the one that won't be ready. Uh, sorry, um, you know he's got a sprained foot, and um, we're going to keep him in that boot for a little while and try to benefit from that bye week being early. So there's, uh, you know, at the beginning at the beginning of uh, the spring when they came out with all the schedule adjustments, I was kind of like. Really? One game and a bye? But, you know, maybe it's an opportunity for us to get some kids back for that Central Michigan game, such as Nick Robinson. And um, 
ramp things up for him. Tough deal for him. It's a sprain. It's not a serious injury, but it's a nagging injury, and you can't play offensive line without having power through that foot, and um, it's painful. So rather than trying to push him through the pain to get him ready for this game, we're going to keep him in that boot and keep the uh, treatments on the high side and, and, and try to get him healthy for the, the rest of the season. Uh, I don't think he'd be ready to play by Friday night anyway, but the other, the other two are ready to roll. Uh, all right, so you talk about sign on. You know, people use that expression. You know, this is what we signed on for, that kind of deal. So this is the second year for you. Yeah. And as you signed on a year or so ago, are you on course with this program? Do you like where you're, you know, you're going into year two? Is everything where it needs to be in your estimation on the timeline? Um, you know, as a, for my personality type, I struggle ever really truly looking at it that way. I really do. I've tried that in the past. And it's been an epic failure. So I try not to look too far forward. Um, and I know it sounds like coach speak, but it's the truth. I just try to win every single day and just get a little bit better, knowing if I focus on that. It's like I was talking to my son Wolfgang down at Ithaca. He's got an inner squad scrimmage today. And uh, he said, I asked him how he was doing. He says he's doing really well, excited. I said to him, what's it looking like? Where do you think you'll be? Will you make the travel team? And he goes, Dad, I'm just trying to get back better tomorrow. And I was like, damn right, Wolf. And, and I think it's just, it's just in our makeup, you know what I mean? For me, that formula's worked better than looking, looking ahead. Now, I have a lot of sleepless nights going into the opener. I have a lot of sleepless nights going into the next phase of whatever the program's in, you know, going into the, you know, my second season and stuff. But I don't like to look too far down the road because then I may miss something that's right underneath my nose. And um, I'm trying to stay true to that approach because it's, it's worked well for me in the past, um, you know, when I was an assistant coach, you know, working with the secondary and then as a coordinator. And I just feel comfortable in that zone. So I try not to look at that. You know, someday when I get older and retire, we'll look back and reflect more. Um, but I don't like to reflect backwards or forward too, uh, too far. Eric. With Bromley gone and Eric not will go at the start of camp, maybe getting a chance to get a longer look at some of those guys like Isaiah and Marcus how would, and Wayne, how would, they evaluate, how would you evaluate their progression from kind of start of camp to this point? I think they're all those kids you mentioned, as well as a couple of the freshmen, are ramping up their game and getting better. Um, they're not where they need to be as individuals. We won't have a Jason Bromley on the field. Um, I think Eric Kroom can play at a high level, and I've seen great improvement out of all those, all those young men that you just mentioned. But we'll truly know when we get into the meat of, meat of the, the game uh, Friday night to see how they respond to all the things that you can't truly um, you know, uh, establish in a practice. So we're trying to establish those things, but you know, how are they going to control the things that they have to on a, on a game, in a game setting will be... Uh, things that we'll uh, discover throughout the course of the game. That's why we have to do a good job early in the season coaching throughout the game. When you have seasoned veterans, you're managing more than uh, uh, inspiring, motivating coaching throughout the course of a game uh, with some of those young guys. You know, we have to do a great job seeing what, they, what they're looking like before the game, seeing that uh, gristle in their face or lack thereof, and try to get them to that happy place where there's balance and calm controlling their emotions, uh, controlling their spirit, um, and also controlling their mentality to say, what is my job for the next three to six seconds on each play? If they falter a little bit, we have to do a good job getting their mindset back to where they can uh, succeed on the next play. And I think early in each season I've ever been a part of, it's really crucial that we do a good job on the sideline uh, with those kids. Um, so I'm excited for their opportunities. They've all worked very hard. Um, Wayne made me, I was cutting through the locker room yesterday and uh, it was a little uncomfortable situation for me, but this big guy grabs me, Wayne grabs me and he says, coach, come here. Walked me over to the scale and stepped on it and he was like 312. And he's so happy and, and proud of the work he's put in. And now we get to put it into some work on Friday night. Um, do you have any kind of update on Alan yet? We're just saying, uh, same that I've been saying, not to sound like a broken record, when he's ready to get here, obviously school starts Monday and we have drop ad dates and all those things. Um, same thing I've been saying, 
all I'm telling you is I'm sticking by him when when his family when the when the situation is such that he says I can get back, and um, we'll bring him back if that's if that's tomorrow. Great. If that's during the winter, great. Either way, he's my guy, and uh, we're sticking by him. You know, he's been, his, his hand of cards that he's been dealt as a youngster is so so far different than anything uh, probably you or I. This is not to assume anything with your background, and uh, he's fighting his butt off to get things right at home, um, and can't wait to get him back whenever that is. Like I said, tomorrow or you know for a winter uh, session. That's just that's just part of what we do. And, that's how we're going to approach it with him. He's a great kid. Coach, um, you know, I know you talked a lot about just winning today, and that's the mindset. But in terms of opening the season, last year you start in an NFL stadium with Penn State and then yeah. on the road against another Power 16. This year is certainly a little different with FCS at home, an off week, and then on the road in non-Power 6. Does that factor in at all to any preparation or mindset going into the year? Or is it just game once a year, game two a year? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Not with me. It's, it doesn't. Football game, got a football game to play. I've been on the other side of it when we weren't supposed to be playing uh, this team because we were smaller and all that stuff, and and we were lucky enough to you know hit people on the chin and uh, win some games we weren't supposed to early. Opponent is an opponent, and don't ever take them lightly, and especially this outfit. Coach Talley knows how to win games. Two hundred, two hundred four games, I think he's won. I mean, come on. I mean, this guy, this guy can flat out coach. He started out in Ohio too, by the way. A lot of good Ohio guys out there. All right, thanks. Good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.